Okay, like Debbie said, I'm Bob Harrington. Uh, this is Nikki. Stand up, hon. She's our model for today. She is super tall, so we may be sitting her down. <laughs> um, so today's presentation is on controlling your light, shooting with, uh, with grids. So let's start with the slideshow. Welcome to the B&H Photo Event Space, lighting with grids and controlling your light. Publications, um, photographic lighting uh, by Ammonite Press. It's on Amazon.com. And my other book, One Speed Light 16 Looks, um, it's really simple and easy to understand. I try to break everything down to the basics, right? Um, go to your Zen moment, close your eyes, relax, forget everything you know, and just build back up from there. And keep it simple, okay? Keep it simple. It can get complex very quickly and very frustrating. Here's our sponsors. Today's Expo Imaging, they make the Rogue Flashbender, which is the maker of the grid. Um, many thanks to Anomaly Models. That's where Nikki is coming from today. Um, I use Capture One Pro 9 for tethering and raw conversion. And I have a new software I'm going to show you guys called Set a Light 3D. Uh, our lighting gear for today, I'm using Nikon SB910 and a couple <coughs> SB800s. Uh, SD9 and SD8A battery packs. Um, a Rogue XL Pro, XL Pro flash bender. Uh, Rogue 45 degree grids uh, and the Photix Aries radio triggers. Okay. Continued gear for today is uh, Manfrotto 105.2 BAC light stands. Uh, a Lumo Pro LP633 or Photec umbrella bracket. They stock the Photec here, right down in the lighting uh, center. Uh, Ansman 2850 milliamp batteries and Ansman chargers. Uh, that's what I use for all my speed lighting, for all my double A's. I'm setting my camera basically to 1 200th of a second shutter speed, aperture 5.6 or 8, depending on what I'm shooting. Uh, ISO 100. Uh, I set my white balance to custom or daylight. Flash, I work mostly in manual mode on my flashes, so I set my key light to usually manual mode at half power, and then I adjust from there. Then I set my hair background edge lights to a quarter power to start. So it's key and fill. So our first shot here is taken with a, a speed light and a rogue 25 degree grid. Just this, with a 25 degree grid, and that's it. Our second image, I, I move the light back a little bit. Okay, change her pose, and pre really pretty much just lit her from her eyes here to like her neckline, right around here. So you can see some of the deeper shadows on her forehead. Grids and gels, okay, controlling your light and also adding color tone. In this photo, I have a blue gel underneath the model, all right? I have a speed light on top into a Photix Luna beauty dish and a strobe light on the bottom into the Photix Indra with a blue gel on it. There it is firing, okay, you can see the blue tone coming off the white uh, reflector down below and just adding a little touch of color contrast. This one's super cool. I'm really excited about this photograph. Uh, I just got it back yesterday from the retoucher. Here's my setup, okay? So my key light is a Rogue Flashbender XL Pro, which I bent forward, and that keeps light off the background. It only puts light on my subject's face. I have a Rogue grid down below. The top is a blue gel, bottom is a lavender gel. Here's the behind the scenes of being shot, so you can see the color transition. You can see the difference in color tone, okay? So two speed lights, two simple modifiers that you can throw into a bag with you and get something really interesting. This is another shot from that uh, particular shoot. This is four speed lights and four grids. So my key light is high and above on a Matthews uh, Hollywood grip arm, 45 degree grid. My fill light is on a background stand, 45 degree grid. Um, my hair light is on a light stand with a uh, Hollywood grip arm, 45 degree grid, and my backlight is a 45 degree grid. I really like this because the light is sharp out of it. So you have a sharp key light and you have a sharp fill light. Okay, it's really a, a different and unique kind of light, but you have total control. Unlike using a soft box where you're trying to feather the light, move it off the corner, you just point this where you want the light and away you go. So you can see all the point lights are going and there's nothing lighting anywhere else in the room, only her and only the background. All right, then we're gonna start shooting, right? So I have a rogue grid set up here. I'm using 45 degrees. I want a, a kind of some spread here. We're in a very tight, <coughs> confined situation, so I want some spread. And uh, it's about light control, being able to control your light simply and easily. Okay, so I'm gonna take our initial test shot. Yeah, right up to me, up to here. Perfect, no head that way a little bit. Yeah, there we go. All 
Ah, ouch. Way too hot. That is way too hot. I would definitely take the power down. Yeah, up to me this way. Put your hand down. There we go. I like that better. Bingo. Bingo, bingo, bingo. All right, this is a deep shadow kind of look. Your gridded light's very tight. We're lighting the broad side of her face, getting a little light down here. While I love these deep shadows, I want to pull some of those shadows out just a little bit. So we'll add our second light. I'm at 1 64th minus 1 3rd stop, okay? So I, this is low power. Watch this. There's like nothing coming out of here. But I like how we have our key light coming this way and our fill light will just bring some of that up under her chin, under her nose, under her eyes, and under her hair. We have a beautifully executed simple portrait with two gridded speed lights. All right, now we're going to add a hair light and then we're going to add our uh, back light. I think right about there, what do we say? No, up a little higher. If we drop the light down just a touch, we should be able to hit her shoulders. You have to remember that when you're shooting with grids, everything's a point light. So if you miss your aim just by a little bit, you're gonna miss the whole thing. I like that one a lot. Okay, now what do we have in the background? We have a dark background. Well, I wanna open up that background a little bit. And for this last light, we're gonna put it right directly behind Nikki, and we're going to aim it right at the wall. There we go, yeah, like that, perfect. I like that a lot, don't you? And we're gonna start with the one light solution all over again. All right, so I'm putting the strip grid on the XL Pro. So when you buy this, because this is the time that I sell out, because they are sponsoring me, when you buy this, you get the strip grid with it, which is awesome. Because we're all about light control, right? All about light control. We're gonna hit Nikki on this side. We'll isolate some of the background and we'll see what we get. What do we think? Awesome. Okay, we have a strip grid. We've taken all the light off the background. We have this beautiful skin contrast to the dark background, the dark top. This lighting system is really unique in that it really mimics a beauty dish. So we'll shoot this look one last time and we'll shoot it beauty dish style. Okay, everything's the same. All we did was change the modifier from the strip to the dish. This is the dish look. The shadows are softer behind her, but you're still getting this butterfly light and the deeper shadow here. Okay, but the edges are softer. So it goes to retouch, we're ready to go out to our magazine cover. Done. Simple, quick, and easy, right? The one light solution. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Thank you to Nikki. Whether you're a hobbyist or a professional, b &H has the answers to your questions. Experience a world of technology at our New York City Superstore. Connect with us online or give us a call. Our staff of experts is happy to help.